The Life and Sad Ending of Ted Nugent Ted Nugent was born Theodore Anthony Nugent on December 13, 1948 in Detroit, Michigan. Nugent became interested in rock and roll early in the game, picking up the guitar as a youngster, while his disciplinarian father passed his beliefs down to Nugent. In the 60s, Nugent formed his first bands, drawing inspiration from such British blues rockers as the Rolling Stones and the Yardbirds. But it wasn't until the formation of the Amboy Dukes that Nugent got his first taste of stardom. It was also around this time that Nugent began playing a Gibson Birdland. In addition to music, Nugent has gotten involved in politics, which Nugent claimed he didn't know at the time was about being under the influence. The band managed to issue several albums throughout the late 60s to 1967's self-titled debut, 1968's Journey to the Center of the Mind, and 1969's Migration as the group fit in well with other high-energy rock bands that emerged from the Motor City, the MC5, and the Stooges in particular. With band members coming and going at an alarming rate, Nugent remained the only constant member eventually officially changing the band's name to Ted Nugent and the Amboy Dukes by the 70s, and issuing 1971's Survival of the Fittest, 1973's Call of the Wild, and 1974's Tooth, Fang, and Claw. While none of these releases exactly stormed the charts, Nugent and his cohorts remained an in-demand concert draw, as he also set up guitar duels on stage around this time, battling with MC5's Wayne Kramer and Mahogany Rush's Frank Marino, among others. By the mid-70s, Nugent decided to finally ditch the Amboy Duke's name and set out on his own, assembling a first-rate backing band that included second guitarist vocalist Derek St. Holmes, bassist Rob Grange, and drummer Cliff Davies. By 1975, the new band was signed to Aerosmith's management company, as well as the same record company, Columbia, resulting in the release of Nugent's self-titled debut in November of the same year. The band immediately struck a chord with the heavy metal hard rock crowd from coast to coast, due to the band's over-the-top stage show. But the band members' relationship with Nugent was rocky at best. Nugent wanted complete control of the band, while the others wanted it to be more of a democracy. The end result was St. Holmes leaving the band prior to the sessions of their sophomore effort, 1976's Free For All, which saw a then unknown singer by the name of Meatloaf filling in for the departed singer. St. Holmes returned, however, in time for the album's ensuing tour, and by the release of 1977's Cat Scratch Fever, which spawned the hit single title track, Nugent and company were one of the top rock bands in the U.S. storming the charts and selling out arenas coast to coast. By now, Nugent had assumed the stage name persona of a caveman, hitting the stage dressed in nothing but a skimpy loincloth and knee-high boots, and would often begin his show by swinging out on a rope a la Tarzan. Like other rock acts of the 70s, Kiss, Cheap Trick, Peter Frampton, etc., Nugent used a live album. 1978's classic double live gonzo to catapult his career to the next level of stardom. But despite all the success, the members of his band began deserting him one by one over the course of such albums as 1978's Weekend Warriors, 1979's State of Shock, and 1980's Scream Dream. To add insult to injury, Nugent found himself bankrupt around this time due to several failed business ventures and poor management. The 80s saw Nugent continuing to tour and crank out albums like Intensities, Intense Cities, Nugent, Penetrator, Little Miss Dangerous, and If You Can't Lick Em, Lick Em. But it appeared as though the Nuge was trying to keep pace with the burgeoning pop metal crowd instead of sticking to the raw and raging rock that brought him success in the first place. Nuge also tried his hand at acting around this time appearing as a drug dealer in an episode of the hit TV series Miami Vice in 1986. By the end of the decade, Nugent joined the rock supergroup Damn Yankees, resulting in the quartet's self-titled debut in 1990, which became a surprise hit due to their top 10 power ballad, High Enough. But ultimately, the union proved to be short-lived. After only one more album, the band called it quits. Nugent returned to his solo career, issuing his best album in over a decade, 1955's Back to Basics' Spirit of the Wild. 
while several iCarvel releases turned out throughout the 90s, 1993's three-disc box set Out of Control, 1997's Live at the Hammersmith, 79, as well as his first three albums reissued with added tracks and newly remastered sound in 1999 by the Epic Legacy label. The Nuge was also the subject of an interesting VH1 Behind the Music episode. He continued to tour well into the 21st century and issued the third live collection of his career, Full Bluntal Nudity, in 2001. That same year, the Nuge penned his own autobiography, God, Guns, and Rock and Roll. His Spitfire issued 12th long plier, Caveman, dropped in 2012, followed by Love Grenade in 2007. He next embraced the digital realm by releasing the two-disc, 30-track MP3 online song bundle Happy Defiance Day, every day over the 4th of July weekend in 2010. In 2014, Nugent released his 14th studio album, Shut Up and Jam, which featured a guest appearance by Sammy Hager, followed by Music Made Me Do It in 2018. In addition to music, Nugent has gotten involved in politics, hosting a number one radio show in Detroit, has run his own hunting camp and issues instructional videotapes, owns his own hunting supply store, has been appointed to the board of directors of the National Rifle Association, writes columns regularly for a number of different magazines, and even sells his very own beef jerky. Nugent suffers from hearing loss. He said in a 2007 interview, the ear is not too good, especially with background noise, but that's a small price to play. Believe me, the journey was worth it. Two women have accused Nugent of having sexual relationships with them when they were under 18 years old. In 1978, Nugent began a relationship with 17-year-old Hawaii native Pele Masa. The age of sexual consent in Hawaii at the time was 16, however. They could not marry due to the age difference. To get around this, Nugent joined Masa's parents in signing documents to make himself her legal guardian. Courtney Love also claimed that she performed fellatio on Nugent when she was 12. He is married to his first wife, Sandra Jazowski, from 1970 to 1979. They had two children, son Theodore Tobias Toby Nugent and daughter Sasa Nugent. Sandra died in a car crash in 1982. His second marriage is to Shimane Dezeel, whom he met while a guest on Detroit's WLLZ-FM, where she was a member of the new staff. They married on January 21, 1989. Together, they have one child, son, Rocco Winchester Nugent. On April 19, 2021, Nugent went to Facebook in order to announce that he had tested positive for COVID-19, which he referred to as the Chinese shit, that he previously had denied the existence of. He said, I thought I was dying. I literally could hardly crawl out of bed the last few days. Nugent had also refused to get the COVID-19 vaccine because, according to him, nobody knows what's in it. The world is facing a terrible pandemic. Please pray and follow effective prevention measures. Hope everything will be fine in the near future.